Hi everybody, Christopher Naiman. Well, 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 what is going on? <laughs> You're thinking, wait, didn't he say he wasn't going to make another rope bowl video? Yep, that is what I said. And then I saw all the positive responses on the Facebook groups that I've been posting and sharing these videos on. I thought, hmm, people really like this. And then I got inspired and tried some different things. And, you know, I said, what, what else could be different about making these rope bowls, right? That no one else is, I've seen no one else doing. So today I had to stop at my favorite store, which is Harbor Freight. I love going to Harbor Freight. And I said, I'm going to check to see if they have any rope. Well, they had this rope here. And this is a uh, nylon poly blend diamond braid, a quarter inch by 100 feet, by 100 feet. And I thought, hmm, what can I do different with this rope that I wasn't doing with other rope? And then I said, I know I want to get white because I want to try some different color uh, thread of the variegated thread of which I showed you in one of my previous videos on variegated thread. So today this is the variegated thread that I'm going to use right here. Um, and everyone I want you to know that when you ask me where do I get these threads I did a variegated thread video and I want you to watch that okay because I tell you like where I where I acquired all this thread from. And then I'm going to use a leather needle size 18. So if you're asking, I see people on the, on the sewing groups that still don't understand needles because they'll say, oh, is that a purple needle? Oh, is that a yellow needle? Oh, is that a green needle? But you're not saying, is that a top stitch needle? Is that a leather needle? Is that a universal needle? Because that is very, very important to understand the type of needle that you're using. And then the size is dependent upon the type of material you're sewing on. So if you go with this and explain to people what type of needle you're using or things like that, it will make it universally much more easier for everyone in all different brands to understand. Because even brand specific people don't understand what type of needle they're using. I asked a lady one time, I says, she asked me if, I was, uh, if there was a purple needle I was using. I says, could you please tell me what type of needle a purple needle is? She replies, she goes, well, it's purple. And I'm like, okay, but what type of needle it is? She didn't know. She didn't know. So you see, it's very important. Now, I did a couple of videos on needles. So it's very important. Watch, go to the website of these needles like Class A, like Schmetz, and read about the different type of needles. Because if you don't understand needles, you're going to have problems sewing different types of non non-standard materials okay all right now so i thought what can i do different than nobody else is doing and then i thought i've got this beautiful machine right i've got this beautiful janome mc9900 and this 9900 is filled with all kind of decorative stitches look at this all the decorative stitches but you know, people like, how many of us actually use the decorative stitches? Well, I used to use a lot of decorative stitches when I made my pillows. And I'd be, I was doing decorative stitching in the well of the seam and bobbin work and stuff, which is great. And there's a lot of decorative stitches people use when they're doing heirloom sewing, okay? Heirloom sewing is really all about decorative stitching, okay? Today, I decided I'm going to try this stitch here number 03 and this is in your satin stitch category now your machine if you have a, a machines above mine you have a hun hundreds of more decorative stitches than I do so your possibilities are endless endless now one thing I love about this Janome okay one thing I love about Janome is there this is a nine millimeter wide machine okay now I am not going to sew with nine millimeter wide I'm going to sew, I'm going to have an 8 millimeter wide, I'm going to set it to 8 millimeter wide, so I'm set, setting the, the stitch itself to 8 millimeter wide, and 0 .60 length. Now, if you do not have a 9 millimeter wide stitch, you could set it to 7 millimeter, 6 millimeter, you need to do testing. Remember what I always say in all my videos, test, test, test. And when people say, can I do this, can I do that? You don't know until you try. You don't need anyone's permission. Just try it, test it, and let me explain to you. No one, I don't ask anyone's permission to make things and try things. I do them, that's how I come up with this stuff. Imagine what you can come up with if you didn't wait for someone's permission to try something, all right? So the first thing I did was, 
I tried this thread here on this weight, and it really wasn't giving me a pop. This is two, two rows of uh, this rope that I tested on. It really wasn't giving me the pop. Then I did this. Look at that. Look at that. Does that pop? Yeah, that really pops. That variegated thread color really pops. Now, here's something else. If you're a black and white person, you could use black thread on this white rope, and that would really be stunning, or all red or all blue. But I would suggest using darker, intense jewel tones to show up against this white background. Does that make sense? Okay. Then someone asked if I was using the same bobbin in the bottom as I am the top. That's up to you. That is totally up to you. I am going to use I'm going to use the same bobbin in the bottom. This one I didn't. I was testing and I didn't use it. But I'm going to use the same color thread in the bobbin as I am the top. So let me go through this again. My decorative stitch width for me is 8.0. If your machine only goes up to 7.0 width, then set it for 7.0. I'm using the standard foot. That's the standard straight and zigzag foot with a black black button on the side. Whatever brand you have, that's most 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 all brands today have that little black button. Unless it's like Janome or Faf. I don't think I'm sorry, unless it's like uh, Bernina or Faf, they don't have it. And then if you can, if you have a machine, the great thing to use in the, you know, that gets you started really good is a knee lifter. So you can keep both hands on your fabric. Use a knee lifter. And if you're looking to upgrade a machine, I would highly suggest you get a machine with a knee lifter. Because in industrial sewing, they don't use any pins. They use their hands to hold the fabrics as pins. And they move the fabric around with a needle. The needle goes down. You can set this machine so the needle stops permanently in a down position. And then you lift and you curve. You turn. You pivot right now I do have machines where the machine the foot automatically lifts every time you stop but I still like using my knee lifter to control I like that so much better so let me get started this is going to be sewn just like any other rope ball I'm going to do this in a, in a almost a little bit of a oh, oblong circle more of a circle but this is just like all the other rope videos that I produced that you guys watched and some of you didn't, didn't watch that you you know you're going to watch and like always I'm going to suggest let's hear something and we keep improving as we make these like I said I didn't make these until a few the first time I made these you know I, I wrote I did a video just about a week ago and showed you guys and said hey this is my first time why didn't I do this before so I'm going to cut that on an angle and melt this so it kind of has a taper so then when I curl it around it's more tapered Okay, so let me set my camera up and you can watch me sew. And if you have any more questions, watch, all my, watch the series of these videos I have on the rope bowls and you'll learn a little bit more in every video that I've produced. Okay, enjoy it guys. I hope you really have fun doing this because there's so many endless possibilities. And I did a research on, Google, on, on YouTube to see if anyone had done decorative stitches with rope bowls. I didn't find anything. Now unless they, when they captured they put the title in they titled it something different it didn't pop up for me but i didn't see anything so you know i guess i'm trying something no one else is doing and if you have done it um and you posted a video i could not find it so um i'm going to take credit for being the first to do it and if i wasn't the first to do it well you know what you will be the first to do it in your house right okay let me get set up all right so to get started i would suggest that you increase your stitch length because when you're going over anything heavy like this it's going to get a little hung up underneath there and as you see us get started here this is the most tedious part of all this is the part that everybody hates is the beginning of this so you gotta make sure your stitch length is longer which I found out in my first um, Actually, my first tutorial I did. Okay. So the decorative stitch on this one doesn't go backwards. It just lock stitch. When I hit the reverse on this one, it just lock stitches and. All right, let's try again. There we go. Turn it. Now, depending upon your machine, your rope, and all that stuff, you're going to want to test 
the width of the stitch as you start sewing. This thread that I'm using is a little heavier, like a top stitching thread, so you'll definitely want to adjust the length, the, um, the length of the stitch, uh, per the type of thread you're using. Okay? Nothing is completely set in stone. This is all just guiding. This is all guiding. Okay, so let me get past this. I'm going to get this going before I decrease my stitch length. By the way, um, what I showed you earlier, wouldn't that make a nice bracelet? Hmm? These two pieces of rope sewn together like that, wouldn't that make a nice bracelet? Remember one of my other videos, I said every time I create, I'm always thinking of other things that I could make out of that stuff? And that was right there what I just showed you. Okay, I think this is good enough to start. Yeah, this might be good enough to start. Okay, so I'm going to knock my stitch length back down. Let's see, what do I want to do? What, what did I say it was? Let's just try let's try 4.0 and see what that does. Or 4.0. Let's see if 4.0 is enough. Now I want to go longer. So let's go. You'll be able to figure out what will be good as you're sewing for your machine, your thread. Now, it's very easy to mess up a little bit. So what you want to do, and I've make, you know, I've, I've missed it too. Make sure that you watch this. See how this thread? I'm sorry, not thread. Rope. I keep saying thread. I even said that in my last video. You want to make sure that they meet, they butt up in the split center of that foot. Now I would suggest that if you do mess up with this, and you have to go back and re-sew just so you don't mess up the pattern I would sew it back together with invisible thread in the bobbin and the top I like how that's coming out I really do it's looking really good all right let me make sure I can get down here for you guys to get closer to see all right here we go So now you found a nice creative process to use your decorative stitches. And I think the best stitches to use for this is a wide satin stitch because you've got to make sure that whatever decorative stitch you're using that it still sews both sides together. This is really looking good. Really looking good. Now, the real look will come when we start building the walls. And you'll see when we do the walls how much nicer it'll really look. Now, do I think that's a little too short or too long? That looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it just like that. As long as it's feeding and it's flowing, I would keep it the length of the stitch. Now, as I said, the stitch width, the stitch length is all up to you, your machine, and the materials that you're using. What I'm showing you and telling you is what works for me right now, and it's a guide.
And as you're going up the walls, you may want to change it by a decimal or two. Like I said, nothing is set in stone. This is inspiration in a guide, just showing you what you can do. Okay? So. And test different threads. Get a couple pieces of rope and sew them together like I did and test a couple different threads. Now this one actually, yeah, see this was actually shorter. This was a shorter stitch length than what I here going on right now. And I may increase this, I may decrease the stitch length when I start getting, this, this starts getting wider. Now this will take longer to sew than what you were doing before because it is a lot more, the stitches are a lot closer together. Okay, the stitches are a lot close together, so it will take you a lot longer to make one of these bowls. But the results are so creative. You may not want to do uh, a bowl this wide. You may want to do a much more narrow, I'm sorry, not the bowl this wide, but the stitch, decorative stitch, you may not want it to be this wide. You want it to be a little more narrow, and if you have a seven millimeter wide foot width, then that is the highest you can go. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to decrease the stitch width and I'll bring it down to 7.0 for all of you that have a 7.0 width machine. Now what do I mean by 7.0? Well, right here, the width of the opening of the foot. Most, the older mechanical machines were either 4 or 5 millimeter width. The modern computer machines are 7 millimeter, and the newer upper line machines are 9 millimeter wide. And this is a 9 millimeter wide width. So I just decreased the width to 7.0 now. You know what also I want to tell you all? When I make my videos, I have no pre-written script. This is everything I shoot in my videos is just talking as I go. So I try to cover as much as I can for you all. And I think I give you a lot of information to help you. All you have to do is watch my videos and turn up the volume and listen. Because I know a lot of people don't do that and they ask questions that everything's already been answered in the video. So I do these for you to help you all, but you got to help yourself, you all. You really got to take some initiative on your own. Remember, children learn what they observe. If they see the adult not taking initiative to be, you know, self-sufficient and independent, the kids may turn out to be non-self-sufficient and non-independent as well. So show the kids, young kids today, how to do things and pay attention and learn. Okay, so I just decreased the stitch length. I decreased it to 5.55. I'll go around this and see how it comes out. Now be careful how short you go if you're using thicker thread. And this is a thicker thread. This is more of a top stitch thread. Okay, I love the way this is coming out. What I see so far, it kind of reminds me of some traditional tribe, you know, beautiful tribe colors. Isn't that nice? It just, wow. I don't know what kind of tribe, Indian, whatever, but oh, it's it, I, looking good. Can you imagine if you did this with turquoise thread? Turquoise and white thread, variegated? That would be really pretty too.
But this almost looking like mosaic glass too, you know? So where do I buy my threads? Well, watch my video on the variegated threads for the rope bowls. And I tell you where I got my all these years, you know? And you can see my collection. Uh, you can buy a variegated thread anywhere, everybody. You just have to do a Google search. And all my life, of the years of sewing that I've been doing, everywhere I go, if I'm in a fabric store, if I'm at a garage sale, if I'm looking things up online, I see something I like, I buy it. I say, oh, I really like that. I may not have a project for it at that time to do it, but I will in the future. And that's what's happening now. That's what's happening now. I buy things when they're a really good deal, when they're on sale. And when I'm ready to make something, I've got the stash in my drawer. You know, people have wine collections. People have coin, coin collections. So, you have a thread collection, you have a fabric collection. You have a needle collection of various different needles. So when you try different projects, you'll, you can go right to a different type of needle to use and you'll, you'll have it on hand. If you are only doing one genre of sewing, you are not doing yourself a favor. You are not doing yourself a favor because you will never go beyond that and you'll never learn more. Just like when people are saying to me, oh my God, where'd you get that rope? Where'd you get that rope? Well, you know, if you don't shop for power tools, you didn't know. All right, now I'm going to start curving this up. I think that's enough. Now, some of you are going to say, what's the recipe? What's this and that? You know, what's the, is there a pattern? Okay, no. So this one is a little over six inches. I went a little further than I wanted to, but that's okay. So now I'm going to start curving it up. This is going to be a big bowl. All right. This will be for family style bread. <laughs> this, is going to, this is going to be enough bread in this bowl for a family, right? <laughs> All right, here we go. Now here's, here's something I want to point out to you guys. Do not hold this hard. Do not resist do not pull this to, res to prevent it from feeding. You want to guide it, okay? And you want to make sure that your circle you just made is pushed up against the side of the machine without holding it hard against the machine. You just want to make sure you're holding it up because that's what's going to start forming the walls. Now, especially if you're going to be using thicker top stitch thread, if you're preventing this from feeding, the top stitch thread is going to build up underneath and get caught in that little hole in your feed dogs, and then you're going to have a traffic jam underneath there. So all these things are very, very important to keep in mind. And I'm telling the newbies this. The veteran sewers already know all this, but the newbies need to learn this. So I'm holding the rope up to help it curve. I'm not holding it back. I'm guiding it and just holding it lightly. Now, sometimes you can get dizzy looking at this, okay? And your mind might wander off and you'll end up sewing it a little crooked and you have to go back and fix it. Now, if you don't want to disrupt the pattern, you can fix it with invisible thread later on. Or if you don't care, you can go back over this again. But the thing is that you want to be sure that like, I'm running a camera. I got a camera in front of me and everything. So sometimes I glance at the camera and I'm talking to you guys and sometimes I'll mess up. So if you're feeling a little blurry by all this colorful colors, close your eyes, walk away a little bit, go get something to drink and come back. And make sure you try to keep that the two pieces of rope dead center in the middle of that foot. And as I said before, do not watch the needle when you sew, okay? Watch right up here. You're gonna, when you sew, you're going to watch right here. Don't watch the needle.
Yeah, from all the videos that I saw, and even the videos that I did on the rope bowls, we were just using a zigzag stitch. And I thought, man, you know, we got all these decorative stitches. What would work also for this? And that's when I said, ah, oh, let's try a satin decorative stitch and see if that works. And guess what? You're seeing the results. How's my bobbin thread? Oh, I'm almost out. So since I'm almost out, I'm gonna change it now. So I'm gonna hit my lock stitch button. It's gonna finish the pattern for me. There we go. And it's gonna cut the thread. There we go. Then I'm gonna use my knee lifter. Oops, put my needle back up. I'm using my knee lifter. Oh, it didn't cut the thread. Oh, yes it did. <laughs> and then, see? I still have a little bit enough in there, but I think I'm going to just replace it now. And what color did I leave off on? I left off on blue. So let me see if I were on my here with blue. Okay, I'm just gonna move it forward a little bit so I get some more blue. There we go. There we go. Now you all tell me this isn't fun, right? You can sit back and say, look, I made my own art. This is real bowl art, isn't it? This is definitely bowl art. Okay, I must have hit the lock stitch button. Yeah, I did. Okay. Oh, something stuck under there. Let's see what's going on under here. Something got stuck under there. What's going on? Now I gotta troubleshoot because there's something wrong. So let's pop the plate up. Let's see if there's anything caught under here. Uh, nope, I don't see anything caught under here. And this is a good thing to show you guys. When you're doing this much sewing, you definitely are gonna wanna pull your bobbin case out. Look at, okay, look at, I'm already, look at that. Look how much um, lint I have in there already. Look at that. All right, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to clean. I take this little opportunity to clean. So I like to take oil and put it on a Q-tip, and then rub it around here. The oil on the Q-tip will help pick up all the dirt. Look at that. See that? A lot of dirt around there. Let me get another clean Q-tip here. I like to rub it all around. You know, a little bit of oil on this bobbin shuttle here, or this bobbin, yeah, bobbin shuttle. That won't hurt. That won't hurt. And I believe there's a wick down in there. So I'm just going to put a drop of oil on that wick while I'm here. Just a drop, you don't need much. And then, it, since I have oil on here already, I'll make sure. Now, some I want you to know something, everybody. When you clean, do not get a can air. Do not get can air and just blow it around in here because this is going to blow the dirt into the machine. Now, people will say, oh, but my, my repairman uses air when he cleans. Well, yeah, he uses air when he cleans because he has the whole front, the whole cover of the machine off everywhere. So when he blows it, it comes out the sides and, and flies out. It doesn't stay inside the machine. So what you're best to do is to get yourself those little keyboard vacuum attachments that they use to clean the keyboards and small areas and, and use that to vacuum. Okay, all right, so that looks good. 
All right, now let's bobbin case. Let's see. Is there anything? Yeah, look at that. See? That oil on there. Or dirt, I mean. All right, that looks good. Let's drop that back in. There we go. It's like driving a car. You want your car to last? You gotta change the oil as often as you can. If you don't, you're gonna wear that engine out. Especially these smaller cars today that require you to change the oil more frequently. Okay, let's put the bobbin back in. Put the cover back on. Wipe my hands from the oil, and we will pick up where we left off. At this point, I'm not really concerned about matching the pattern. You know, it's so busy anyway, I don't think it's going to be noticeable. But I will go back later. I'll go now and show you. It's going to light, do the lighter to melt those threads so they melt in so they don't unravel. The threads are sticking out from when I left off. There we go. All right. Let's pick up where we left off. Okay, here's where I started out earlier. And I want to trim this up here. I can see that up here. And get my lighter and melt that thread. And it's not actually melting it, it's just curling it up. People are going to ask, oh, you guys want to ask me what type of thread this is. Well, let me show you how old this is. This is actually, a, this was inside the spool of thread. It says, this is Robinson Anton Texton, te uh, Textile Company. It says number 30, lot Q, 3982, 33, cotton. Cotton. Fast dye. This is all I can tell you it says right here. This was up inside that cone of thread. And I bought this years ago. But there are different brands all over. Just do a Google search and you'll find all different brands. You'll find different color schemes that you can use. All right, so I just want to give you a shot of my screen here so you can see what my settings are. So on this machine, you can see my setting is 7.0 width and 0.55 length. And that's the decorative stitch that I'm using. Okay, let's go back here now. Isn't that pretty? Does that look like stained glass? Now I do have to tell you, this is the third bowl I'm making with the same needle. So I may need to change the needle at some point because if you start getting skip stitches, that means your point is worn down and you have to change it. So, you know, I know people who never change their needle and they wonder why their machine always breaks threads and stuff like that. So be aware of that also. That's to the, for the newbies to understand. Now, the higher you go on the walls, the bigger your bowl will be. How big do I want this bowl to be? I think I'm almost done with it. Let me see how much bobbin thread I have left. I got quite a few in there. Quite a, quite a bit of bobbin thread left. All right, I think this is going to be enough. So let me cut my rope. Cut the rope on an angle. Melt it. Melt it. Put it to the side. And here we go. Melt that 
some more. On this mod, this this thread doesn't have the melt factor like the other one I used. So. See? So am I. Oh, oh this is gonna be pretty. Are you ready? Are you ready? Look at that. Look at that. Ah! <laughs> and we made this together. You watched me make this whole thing. Look at that. Look at the difference. See the different kind of stitching because the thread was pulled to the back? compared to here but from a distance it's got a really nice look to it oh my gosh that's such a beautiful bowl isn't it all right so i'm not going to say this is the last video because every time i say that i end up making another one but i wanted you all to see this because i come up with this idea and i thought this is so wonderful you know with all the bowl videos that people are making out there i'm like there's got to be something different it's got to be something different than wrapping the clothesline something different than you know, dyeing the yarn and stuff, and the the thread, the rope that I found was industrial strength rope the, the, before in the last few videos, the industrial rope, and then I saw this and I thought, okay, I know I want to use that variegated thread on white, so I'm going to go out and spend some money on white, um, white rope, which I said when I was at my, when I was at uh, Harbor Freight today, I got this, but I said, what about if we use decorative stitches? You know, what if I use a decorative satin stitch? So, try different decorative satin stitches on samples. Like I showed you earlier how I did it on a sample. I sewed two rows of thread rope together and tried different, different designs. Um, and then you'll have an idea of what you're going to do and you come up with something perfect. And then you can make it, you see? Then you can make it. So if you're going to say, can I do this? Can I do that? You don't know until you try. You don't need my permission. Try it. You see everything that I'm doing? No one told me. I didn't have no one to ask and say, can I do this? Can I do that? And you know what? I wouldn't listen to them anyway. Because half the stuff on the internet, when you ask people on these sewing groups, they don't know. They don't even know needles. They don't even know what a type of needle is. So you get in there and you do it and you figure it out and you say, wow. And when you discover something else, then you're going to say, oh my God, look what I discovered. Just like this right here. Okay? All right. That's all for this one. Give it a shot and uh, let me know how you're doing. Okay, everybody? And uh, yeah. So if you like and subscribe this video, okay, like, like this video, subscribe to my channel. So when I have more future videos coming up, uh, you'll get notified. And uh, I just want to say thanks for watching. appreciate your support. And I hope I've given you enough education to be able to get you more um, diversified in your sewing room so you can be more creative. S take something old that's been around for a long time and give it a new life. Give it something different that hasn't been done. Okay? And I don't have to starch this one because this one's pretty firm. This one's pretty firm. I really like that a lot. It's just really, really pretty. Alright, take care. Talk to you later. Bye, everybody.